With a quorum, we'll call the meeting order. Invocation. Prayer of Thanksgiving. God of all blessings, source of all life, giver of all grace, we thank you for the gift of life, for the breath that sustains life, for the food of this earth that nourishes life, for the love of family and friends and community. We thank you for the mystery of creation, for the beauty that the eye can see, for the joy that the ear may hear, for the unknown that we cannot behold, filling the universe with wonder, for the expanse of space that draws us beyond ourselves. We thank you for this community, for families who nurture our becoming, for friends who love us by choice, for companions at work who share our burdens and daily tasks, for strangers who welcome us into their midst. For people from other lands who call us to grow in understanding. For children who lighten our moments with delight. And for all who offer us hope for the future. We thank you for this day, for life and for one more day to live. For opportunity and for one more day to work for justice and peace. For neighbors and one more person to love and by whom to be loved for your grace and fun for one more experience of your presence, for your promise to be with us and to be our God. For these and for all blessings, we give you thanks, eternal loving God, and in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Congratulations to, to the, the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Any changes? We do have a few changes to the agenda from what was published on Saturday, and that is the removal of the study session on the wastewater treatment plant, the addition of, I'm going backwards up the agenda, so we'll remove the study session at the bottom, and we will add an executive session for confidential business data. Your, your agendas reflect these changes, but the ones that were published on the website okay. were, were different. So, any questions? No. Okay. I have a motion for the changes. I move to accept the recommended changes. Motion, Chris, do you have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Agenda is approved. Move on to the presentation, USD 333. First of all, thank you so much for inviting me to come in and wish you a happy Thanksgiving. A little token of appreciation with a bottle of water there uh, so you can gobble till you wobble tomorrow and, and wash it down with some, uh, with some water there. Um, I just want to touch base with you a little bit. Obviously, um, you guys work in, in, in this area and, and know a lot of the ins and outs. Um, obviously, this seven-member board works on the school district side of a lot of the ins and outs. And, not not the media or anything, but some of that stuff gets relayed to the public and gets out in the public and some of it doesn't of, of all the planning and the work that goes on, whether it be, I know there's a lot more that goes into the city than what water slides. Um, it's, it seems it gets promoted a ton and everyone wants to talk about that. So it's the same thing kind of happens with the school district. So um, Amy and I have visited in, in passing about, uh, she's going to come in and do a little bit of a presentation while it goes on the city to our school board so we know, um, it's, I guess maybe level the playing field a little bit so our board members understand TIF <laughs> um, and that way uh, and, and maybe your board members can understand um, kind of what's going on with the school district and some of our facility planning. So I'm going to um, start with just a few numbers at a glance. <clears throat> so if you take a peek um, at that top chart there, um, I know it's a busy slide, but if you look at the top chart there, if you look in 2007-2008, our overall mill rate, mill rate for, the, for the school district itself uh, was 47.65 mils. At that time, base aided per pupil, which is our basic funding principle, that's the number of dollars we get per FTE, per, per student. Um, so that uh, impacts our general fund or our budget greatly. Uh, at that time, we had 1,017 students. 
um, about 323 staff. This was about three years before I came to Concordia. Um, and our employee health benefit at that point cost us a little over $1.7 million at that time. So if you, if you bump that up a little bit into the 15-16 school year, uh, we had bumped up to about a mil. Um, our total USD mill rate went to 48.95. This is after that they passed that, uh, four, uh, that uh, parent four mil increase uh, that was able to not be a four mil increase when we were in that bond issue for the FEMA shelter at the elementary school. At that point is when uh, school finance was hot and heavy. And if you notice there, we, we had dropped, um, we dropped down to 38.52. That was in the block grant time. Um, you probably heard a lot about that in the media. 994 students at that time. So not only did we lose a lot of general fund money by our base aided per pupil um, hitting, we also were down students. So that kind of compounded a lot of our problems in, in school finance. Um, <coughs> at that time, we did lower down to 277 staff. Um, but our, our employee health rate still increased to about 2.7 by that time. And then obviously 1718. Um, last year, we were up to 48.7 mils. Um, we increased the base aided per pupil to $4,006 per pupil. Um, we gained, again, we're up to 1146 students uh, at that time for our September 20 count. Uh, we were down to 271 staff members, but our health insurance continued to go, 3.2 million. Obviously, this year, um, we were able to lower our mill rate uh, down to 46.93. Our base aided per pupil is increasing. Uh, with part of the school finance plan. Uh, we're up to 1,170 students as of today. Um, and again, the, that fluctuates daily. <laughs> uh, we, had this, uh, we had four students move out uh, yesterday. Um, we had three more students move in today. And so, you know, it just, it, it fluctuates all over the place. We're at 275 FTE staff right now. With uh, this year's projected we have a renewal rate in January, so our projected rate with our increase right now is about 3.3 million um, is what we're looking at. As you move down, just to touch base a little bit, I've had a, a few public questions on how can we be going up in students and we're going down a classification. We go down from 4A to 3A in sports classification. Well, it's, it's, that conversation is a little bit two-folded, and, and part of that process is, one, um, the thresholds just change annually. Um, as they build new schools in Kansas City or Wichita, and as the numbers shift around the state, we try to balance out um, the school district. So typically 6A, 5A um, have always remained 36 schools um, since, I've, since I was in school that's been about that, about that rate. 4A has, has fluctuated. It, at one point it was clear up to 64 schools. Um, in a couple years it was 48 schools. Um, this particular year, obviously, um, with, with redistricting and changing things, we, we fall into the 3A range um, with there's 64 other schools in Kansas that are 3A, and that student count range is 315 to 174 students um, is where we line up. So it's just where the threshold lines up. So even though we're increasing in students, um, as a district, we're still down into the, to the 3A range. Um, really, we're at 298. That was our September 20th count. Again, if you would probably pull that today, we are at 304. <laughs> and so it just depends on what that count is. Um, so 298 um, is where, where we're at and that's where we're classified. So again, looking at that number, we're just, um, we're just about 17 students shy of, of 4A. Um, depending on how you look at it on whether your glass is half full or half empty, sometimes it's nice to be the bigger fish in, in the smaller pond rather than it would be to be at that 317 range. Uh, playing a, a high school that has, you know, 679 kids in it. So, um, is there any questions on how that works? Obviously, in, in, the, in the media, we've been talking a lot about facilities, and, and the, the B word came up as far as a bond. Um, it, it's, I wouldn't say the, the bond issue process has been new. We've been talking about facilities since I came uh, to the district in 2011 as a high school principal. So just overall, I wanted to take a peek at just the numbers and what our facility looks like. From, from the CES standpoint, the elementary school is built in 1997. So it's 21 years of age, it's life phase two. Uh, it's got the FEMA shelter on it, 85,000 square feet um, in, the, in the entire building. CMS is the 1964 building known as the Old Notre Dame High School. 
Um, its age is 54 years. It's in life phase five, about 30,000 square feet. Obviously our high school is one we're talking about. It's a 1929 structure, um, 89 years old. It's in life phase five also. Uh, has a 57 edition, a 62 edition, a 1969 edition, and a 74 edition onto those buildings with about 274,000 square feet um, overall. So looking at the life phase, part of that slide gets cut off with the presentation. Um, but any, anyway, two of our three buildings um, that have students in them are in life, in life phase five, which just means that the, the cost of maintaining those buildings is, is pretty extravagant and we try to do as best we can with maintaining roofs and, and everything like you guys do, um, but everything from HVAC to, to roofing to simple electrical repairs to plumbing issues uh, end up costing us a lot just because the, the buildings are old and pipes are pipes are old and it's, it's just we wait for something else to fail almost every day. There's, it's just a, it's an aging facility. As we talk about uh, these projects, I get a lot of comments on why, why did the district invest money in the track? So I try to touch base on this uh, with about everybody that I know. Um, again, this was complete out of our capital outlay budget much like you guys may have a capital improvement plan or a capital improvement budget. Um, you might not necessarily have a capital outlay budget with mills going to it, but typically you have, you have money allocated to do that. We do the same thing here, whether it be roofs, whether it be by buses, whether it be other capital improvements. Uh, we're, we're paying for this track out of the capital improvement plan, so it really didn't have anything to do with the hospital. It didn't have anything to do with water slides. It didn't have anything to do with um, the college other than the, they're contributing as a partner. Um, the track had to be replaced. We've talked about that since 2011 when I got here. It was to the point where we were no longer going to be able to host a meet, um, a, a local meet, just because we didn't have um, schools that were willing to come because we had a lot of cracks in our, in our, in our track. The city has been great with this, helping us patch those through the years and it, it, and it helped us limp it by. My comment to the board is I didn't feel confident um, projecting out there and, and talking people and declaring it unfit for competition and still sending my kids out there every day to practice on it or having the city run on it or, or the college or, and, and having to maintain that liability. If, if, I, if I was going to declare it unfit, then I need to be un, unfit for performance and for practice. So that was the conversation. We had to, we want to continue the track program, and it was overwhelmingly that the track program was important for kids, and so that's, that's why that was a priority, and it really had to be done. Um, it was about a million dollar project, and, and that's kind of where, where things started. As we got into it, um, you'll notice up here on here there's, we could elect it as grass, um, and essentially what you would have to do, what you would have to do is put surface drainage or they would call it slot drainage all around this portion. And so when we started itemizing that out, the engineer came to us, the independent engineer that we had that was not part of our construction firm, told us if we're gonna start talking about turf, which a lot of other districts are, and a lot of colleges are, this would be the time to do it because we're tearing all this up anyway. We had to pipe water from our pump all the way over here to the steeplechase anyway. We're tearing up the field anyway, and we're gonna have to tear this, all this side stuff up anyway and all the electrical that goes in here for the track timing system. So it seemed like a good process to have. When you start analyzing that out, um, we, took, we took a peek at what it was going to cost per year um, to maintain that field, and it was about $35,000 when you figure sprinkler maintenance, the cost of water, the cost of fertilizer, the cost of mowing, the cost of lawn mowers. Um, it's about $35,000 a year. Drainage, the cost of the slot drainage offset, the cost of the turf near $150,000. Because what we didn't have to do, we didn't have to put the slot drainage in with the turf because the turf system comes with its own drainage system that's a herringbone pattern that pipes all the way into the storm drain system provided by the city. So this will take six, 16 inches of rain an hour. Um, and what we wanted to do is we wanted to do it right. If we're going to invest that much money in a project, we want to do it right because that was part of the issue we had is most of our track issues were due to the drainage we had and the water getting underneath the track and then bubbling up and then freezing and then, and then cracking. So we definitely wanted to fix the water issue first um, and then the turf was just part of that process. So we figured it was about an ROI of about four years um, to, once you accomplish the, 
the cost of the turf project. And so again, with an eight year warranty and expected life of 12 to 15 years, um, we felt that that was a great decision um, to make that commitment at that point. So again, in, in 12 to 15 years, turf will likely have to be replaced, but again, the cost is not gonna be near as high as what it was on the initial side when you had to do all the groundwork underneath. Essentially now it's just roll one set up and, and put the new carpet down. So um, again, it's gonna be a very efficient way to do it. And, and a lot of districts are moving that way right now just for an efficiency standpoint. Also the playability, um, anytime there's a little bit of moisture, um, it was very difficult if you played three to four games a week on it. Um, if a JV team tears the field up the first game of the season on a Monday night, you're paying for that the entire season. And to resod re is, is pretty extensive, um, anywhere from thirty to 40000 um, when you're trying to resod an entire field. So it gets very expensive. So again, the facility side, what we talked about a lot is our ADA compliance, electrical compliance, fire safety, a lot of the stuff that you guys probably see on your buildings and so forth. Um, special education, OT, PT, those kind of processes. And obviously science classrooms, we've talked about a lot in the media, um, updated collaborative classroom learning environments and updated safety entrances and exits. So the big thing is we've talked about the need with safety, our enrollment growth, our aging and deteriorating facilities, but I don't just wanna tackle those. And so what we're trying to do is look at what education is gonna look like over the next 25 years uh, and try to adapt to meet those needs. At a mass meeting held in February 1929, many people expressed themselves as favorable in the building of a junior college here, but almost everyone favored the idea of having a new high school adequate to the needs of the town for at least the next 15 years. And I was pulled out of a, of a Blade quote um, that I found in some of our old archives. Um, that was clear back in 1929. They were trying to build that structure to get us by um, for 15 years. Um, and, and we're still using it today. So I really feel like we've done a good job of maintaining it um, we did complete it in 1930, it's still in use today, nine years later, again with a 57, 62, 74 edition. Um, it was very prophetic at that time, I think, to, uh, for them to call out the college at that time, uh, clear back in those days. Uh, so it's a very prophetic symbol from the 1929 meeting that in 65 you have a uh, superintendent of the school system serving as the first dean of the college. So I thought that was really interesting history back in the 40th. Just as this, and then this is a very busy slide, but I wanted to illustrate to you what we taught in the 1950s from a public school setting, um, clear on your left-hand side, um, to the list of things that we teach now. Um, education has certainly changed, and, and students have certainly changed, and the, the needs have certainly changed, and, and we can go into that a lot, and I won't go into all the gory details of that, but anything from, um, you know, parent education and drug and alcohol and special education, recreation education, sex ed, sex ed, all those things have been added to our plate over the last 50 years, 60 years, 70 years, and it takes resources and it takes time and it takes um, building space to do that. I do have a video for you just to kind of show you what the future of work is. Next to Kansas is where this is at. Amazon. You can get to your doorstep in 11 hours once an order is placed. This is not in Kansas. This is in northwest Kansas, up by Pinoki, up kind of by Hill City, if you're familiar with that. Dairy Farm, also in northwest Kansas, kind of near Oberlin. This is not in Kansas. It's a 3D house built entirely by robots and a computer. This is near Omaha, Nebraska, where this wall is being built. Denver to Colby, Kansas. Not a driver. Amazon Go. You may have seen that, but you're watching.
locking, you know, there's no checkout. Your phone just automatically builds you. We're seeing the base of this with even at our local Walmart with an automatic checkout system. I like that lawyer was placed by robots. Can we look into that? <laughs> 1900, the Easter parade, just one car. 13 years later, now there's just one horse. Friendly Terminators, then. Yeah. For now. So again, our facility needs um, and space needs, we want to try to accomplish our goals, social emotional learning, counseling, science lab. The CMS side is as we need more space in our, for our CMS issues. Obviously, our JV gym floor is at the end of life and it's not ADA compliant. This is another kind of a similar track conversation. I'd hate to invest money and, and put $100,000 into a new gym floor in a gym that has a restraining line all the way around it that's not regulation size. And none of, none of our uh, visiting bleachers or none of our bleachers in that building are ADA compliant. Um, and we run into that every single year and it's very difficult to try to figure out a way to, to manipulate that. So again, um, part, of our, part of our concerns. Classrooms of the time, this is a high school picture um, in Mr. Rundus' room. Um, I think they taken in the 40s. Um, and then if you take a peek at what, uh, what our jobs were at that time, this is classrooms of the time and our jobs at that time. Obviously, that's, that's one example, whether it be a, an automotive uh, assembly line or whether it be a clothing assembly line. We had four rows of five chairs because that's the job market we're preparing for. Classrooms of our time now, um, if, you, if you take a peek at that, I guess if you go back, um, most um, are all white and likely speaking English, right? Um, very, very little diversity. Um, and you come into a classroom today, um, you have kids in a wheelchair, um, you have a number of different ethnicities. Um, and several different languages in each of our classrooms. So things are different um, than what they were in the 40s and the 50s. This is where I'm gonna put you guys on the spot just a little bit. If you had to pick one of these, one of these skills that you wanted of your own child, what would you pick? For me, when I did this activity, I picked uh, persistence. For my son, Peyton. That's what I want out of him. Adaptability. Adaptability. Mm -hmm. Mr. Lamberts, what do you think? Well, <clears throat> empathy is certainly uh, in line with my philosophy. Um, the decision making. Mr. Snavely, what do you think? I like problem solving. Yeah, problem solving would be mine. Jim, what do you think? What would you pick out of your kids? Or today's kids? Or minor people? You're having younger ones? Oral communication. They don't know how to do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've asked over 500 people in this community and even Northwest Kansas. Not one, I mean, those are all great. Not one person has saying, said content knowledge. Not one. Mm. How are we teaching our kids? classrooms today. We're focused about math scores and reading scores. Why? Because that's what they publish in the paper and that's what everybody's telling us is so important. But if you, I mean, I'm in HR too. 
I'm trying to hire teachers, I'm trying to hire custodians, I'm trying to hire paras. I don't care about content, I'll teach you that. This is what I want. Self-regulation, perseverance, efficacy, integrity. Those are the skills that we're trying, that I, I believe we need to teach. Um, and, and the system that we're, that we're within right now is, is, is not that. It's sitting four rows, four chairs, and we're going to teach you content. I got content all day, and so do you. We can get it. We can get it in a second. We spend all of our time writing capitals, and, and while some of that is very important, I think, this stuff is probably where the focus needs to be, because just like Jim said, th those are the guys he's trying to hire. Somebody with some communication skills, problem solving, critical thinking. So I think it's really important um, that, again, I don't just focus on the facility side to just to just make compliance for ADA, and, and, just, and just make sure that the water turns on and the electrical works. When we start talking about conversations of that capacity, we need to take a, a peek at what education is going to look like in 20, 25, 30 years and get that. And I'm going to, I know I'm keeping a little bit longer than my 10 minutes, but I want to just touch base. What we've done is we've asked KU freshmen that are going into the teaching field, asked to give their a one word description of what their senior year in high school is. Any idea what their one word description would be? These are education majors that we asked after their freshman year of college. Wait, <laughs> boring. 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 Um, and, and we're guilty of this too. We load all of our kids up because we're basing our system on credits. We load them all up on the front end. My son is a seventh grader already taking out one. We're doing the same thing. We're going to get that knocked out. We're going to get that out of the way. When asked what in school prepared them most for success in life, KU students, what, they, what do you think they said? When asked what in school prepared them most for most of the success in their life, what do you think? Sports. Extracurricular activities. Musical. The band. The play. I mean, our kids were up there till midnight, you know, the night before the play to meet a deadline to get, get everything accomplished. What taught them about deadlines and work ethic? This is a fun, I mean, this, I think this will hit this one too. When teachers are asked if they learn more about teaching from student teaching or from the four years in college, what do you think they said? Student, student teaching. teaching. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. If, if you're walking in, and I think Chuck uses the term best, sometimes you're walking in there, it's, it's whack-a-mole. you got so many things coming at you. If you're drinking from a fire hose um, as a student teacher, you're trying to figure that out. The book isn't going to teach you that. So what we're lacking, I think, is experiences. I had experience, whether it be, you know, I had my I had my experience that made me a better person, having to build a fence for my dad on the farm, because if I had a date that night and I wanted to hurry up and get done and did it a little bit shoddy, guess what I got to do <laughs> instead of going on the date? Dad would come check it and then guess what? I guess tonight from six to ten o'clock you're going to be building fence with, with the headlights because I didn't do it right to start with. So I learned real quick. How about I just work my tail off during the day on Saturday and build it right the first time? Rather than having to go back and fix it later because I was I did a shoddy job to start with, our kids are missing experiences, and so I think it's really important. And we we start start talking about focus on on the educational pathway and what we're trying to do. We need to focus on that experience side. Here, when we asked the Consolidated Survey of Corporate America, we asked, um, "This is high school graduate. What are high school graduates lacking?" Eighty percent of these folks that we surveyed. Well, there's professionalism, work ethic, verbal communication, ethics, social responsibility, critical thinking, problem solving, written communication. I mean, you go through it. So high schools are failing, right? Well, let's just take let's just take a peek at what they're saying about two-year colleges. We have one here in town. Two-year college graduates are lacking professionalism, work ethic, teamwork, collaboration, verbal communication, critical thinking, problem solving, written communication, ethics. That's just because those are the those are the in-betweeners. We need to look at the real four-year college graduates. 95% are missing verbal communication skills, teamwork, collaboration, professionalism, work ethic. I mean, this is what we're asking people. So whether you're talking about K-12, whether you're talking about a two-year degree, or whether you're talking about a four-year degree, our people are telling us, and our businessmen are telling us, and you, know, you hire people, I hire people, 
Jim hires people, the radio hires people, we all hire people, and, and this is what we need out of our kids. So I think it's important, as we're talking about, I'm not just trying to talk about fixing the water and, and fixing electricity, I'm trying to change our mentality of what education needs to look like. And we've got to be progressive about it, and we all got to be at the table to have these conversations to get it done and, and do it right. So, there, I'm kind of over my 10 minutes, I'm, just, I'm on my soapbox, but I'm thankful for you guys, and wish you guys a happy Thanksgiving. But thanks for what you do for our kids and, and Concordia, and we're looking forward to uh, working closely with you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very Have much. Have a nice Thanksgiving. <laughs> All righty. Public comments? Okay, we'll move right on. Um, next up was uh, personnel handbook changes and possible resolution approval. I'd like, uh, after reading it over, I mean, there's a lot of stuff in there. And I'd like to table that until the uh, next, I'd like a motion to table that until the uh, next uh, commissioner's meeting when we have all four or all of us here. I would make a motion to table it until a further meeting if I have possible. A motion from Keaton. Second. And a second from Christie. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, we'll at this table. Moving on to um, approval of the minutes of the November 7th meeting. I move to approve the minutes of the November 7th, 2018 meeting. I have a motion from Chuck. Do I have a second? I second the motion. I have a second from Christy. Any further discussion? <laughs> if not, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. <coughs> motion carries. Approval of ordinance number 21. I move to approve appropriation ordinance number 21. I have a motion from Christy. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Keaton. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Approval ordinance 2018-31 for animals. Tonight we're requesting your approval of the animal control ordinances presented. There were no changes since the last study session. Recall we held study sessions on October 3rd and November 7th. The result of those study sessions is summarized in your memo. We um, added, uh, aligned our statute to align with the, or aligned our ordinance to, to the state statute regarding agricultural use of animals. Um, we removed the prerequisite for canine good citizen certification for certain breeds of dogs uh, before they become licensed. We um, removed language regarding wild canine hybrids and wild feline hybrids. And we also combined language regarding vicious dogs with dangerous dog. And finally, we increased the penalty for um, violations of the dangerous dog ordinance, um, increased the penalty from $500 up to $1,000, gave more latitude to the courts to determine the level of punishment based on the individual case at hand, which also provided more objectivity to the enforcement level for the animal control officer. So tonight, we'd recommend that you approve this ordinance as presented. I have a motion. I move to approve ordinance 2018-3144. I have a motion from Chuck. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Keaton. Any further discussion? I would just like to thank you and your staff for all the hard work you put into this and for all the commissioners for the thought and the recommendations. Uh, this was not done lightly and um, everyone really put a lot of effort into it and I'd just like to uh, point that out and thank you everyone. A lot of work from everybody. Okay, no further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Next up, approval of uh, ordinance 2018-2076. This came at the request of um, CTI, as you may have already heard, they plan to merge with Prairie Land Partners um, coming up here at the beginning of January. Back in 2010, uh, the city issued some bonds to help them be able to construct their facility to help that with that financing. They are on track of paying their bonds, are about halfway through the cycle. These bonds will expire in 2025. Because of the merger, we need to update some of our documents related to those bonds and change the name of the tenant to uh, from Concordia Tractor 
ink to, I believe it's listed here. PLP. Yeah, PLP, CTI, real estate. Um, the CTI facility is still going to be in production. It's still going to go on just as, as it is. It's just a change in name, change in business organization. Um, the payments will still be made to Bennington State Bank. Bennington State Bank is the holder of the bonds right now, and they will continue to be the holder of those bonds. And they are already in agreement for this, this change in tenancy. So tonight we ask for your approval of this resolution. Is there any cost on that for changing anything over? Not to the city. Not to the city, yeah. And as I understand it, this is very much standard practice. Anytime something like this happens, it's not out of the ordinary. It's not uh, any kind of financial instability. It's just simply due to the merger yes. reality. I would move to approve resolution 2018-2076. I have a motion. Keaton, do I have a second? Second. A second from Chuck. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. <coughs> motion carries. Manager report. A few quick items, you'll see our lovely growing pile of food plus items for the Resource Center. We currently have um, 1,990 items in that pile, which we're very proud of, and our drive ends next Friday the 30th, so we still have some time to increase that. We've got a, a good level of participation, and we'll give you a report uh, at the end. Last week I spent three days in Pittsburgh, Kansas, attending the Kansas Association of City County Managers Conference. A very good sessions, very well run. Uh, two notable points. Uh, we did get an update from the league regarding legislative and post-election updates and some forecasting. I sent you an email on some of those things of the perspective of the, of the league and how it impacts their statement of municipal policy. So do take some time to, to read that. We also toured some a couple of neat spaces, and the reason I want to highlight those is just I, I love architecture, I love design, I love buildings, so I want to share that with you. But they did showcase uh, two public-private partnerships between the city and the university. One was the Plaster Center, and that was uh, largely privately funded, and the city helped out some with that. But it's an indoor running track facility with an indoor turf football field to support their athletic program. It supports their athletic offices. It has their indoor pool. And then it also has their basketball arena. And it's open to the community. And what I found was interesting is that the city manager there negotiated with the um, college president in, into their agreement to allow community to access that space for free at all times. And, and in turn, the city then pays back a, a portion of the lease back to them. So that, that was really interesting. The other space that we toured was um, a couple of the original buildings to the town of Pittsburgh, Block 22, and they redeveloped those spaces into a mixed-use development. The upper floors are campus housing, the lower floors are a small business development center, co-working space, a coffee shop, and this um, uh, business incubator space as well as their maker space. So really neat how they took those buildings. And what got them to thinking about doing something is that they realized the cost of taking down those three-story buildings was going to be around $3 million. So they were able to secure a developer that wanted to invest with the city and partner with the city, and then they had the tenant of a majority of the space, which was the college. So really interesting. If you get a chance to go down there, definitely tour it. Um, finally, we have several city staff members participating with USD 333 in the mentorship program, and coming up on December 3rd, um, they will also be participating in Career Day, where city staff will kind of explain a little bit about what their careers are, give the students an opportunity to see what, what they can do with their lives after high school, and what can also be done right here in Concordia, which is pretty exciting. And Chuck, I know you're part of that program too, so if you have anything to add. Uh, just a, a real great group of people, and I think it's, uh, you know, to kind of tie in with what uh, Quinn's presentation, looking to try to provide those skills uh, that help people enter into a, a job market and know what they do. Um, you know, that's, that it's, it's not necessarily so much dependent upon the degree you receive, but the education that you receive to do that and the skills that you need. And so being able to pair people up and have this opportunity is pretty, uh, I, I just think it's a great idea and I'm glad to be a part of it. That's great. That's all that I have. Do you have any questions for me? Thank you. Thank you. Staff reports. just kind of want to bring you up to date on the parking lot project out to the airport it's moving slowly <laughs> they did get the the lighting fixtures in and they're working so um, we run into um, kind of winter and with all the rains and stuff they had a soft spot up there and I went as much as to digging the dirt out to give it to them but the dirt was too wet to come back back in so I'm meet, meeting with uh, FAA and a contractor and Finish. We're having a phone conference next week to talk about going into the winter, and it's going to get prolonged till in the spring, till we can dry this stuff out. 
but there's several things we got to do out there in the meantime. I mean, we'll have to fill the hole in that they got, whether it's mushy dirt or whatever, to get it to drain. And I'd like to open up the road out there so people can drive through it. So it's all to be discussed next week at this meeting. I just want to update you a little bit. Appreciate that. Okay. Thanks. Good luck. Any other staff comments? That will move on to uh, commissioners. Chuck? You know, uh, the only comment I really have, um, I try to, I hear a lot of, of, a lot of concerns, um, you know, about, about property taxes and, and where the money goes and how the city is, is charging too much for this, how the school's charging too much for that, how the college is charging too much for this. And almost in the same conversation, people are saying that what they're getting isn't, isn't enough. And, and I guess I just want to put this out into to space. I think this is the, the choir that we're preaching to. But, but really, I think that if people would take the opportunity to come and ask questions or to talk with commissioners, with staff, with school board members, with teachers, I think that, I think that they would realize that 98% that of the people that we have working for our institutions are dedicated, they're working hard with the resources they have. We all want to be good stewards of the resources we have. So it's, it, you know, I think a lot of times people think we're just here collecting money and not really doing anything. We're not getting all the holes patched in the roads fast enough or, or whatever it is. But, but if we wanted to get all the holes patched in the roads this year, we can do that and we'll just have to <laughs> increase taxes significantly to be able to pay for it. So I think uh, a lot of times they think that it, we're not being as good as stewards with our resources as I, be as I believe our staff are and I think the staff of other institutions are. Um, so I, I try to bite my tongue as often as I can. I don't have a whole lot of it left at this point, but I uh, really would just want to reinforce, if you have questions, if you have issues, come talk to the people that are involved in, in doing those things. And I think it won't take a long conversation to realize people are really trying to do the best they can with what they have and really work to try to keep the cost to the average citizen as low as it can be. So. Thank you. Okay. I don't have anything. Christy? The snowflakes look great. I okay. love the snowflakes. Oh yeah. um, and my parents are due any moment, and my mom loves them too. So I just wanted to say thanks to whoever is responsible for getting them up before Thanksgiving. To, to tail on that real quick, we, uh, we took our girls out for a surprise, and when, they, when we turned onto the highway and they saw them, they just they lit up almost more yeah. than I mean, it's just a wonderful thing. It's such an iconic piece of Concordia. Nice. I really do love them. So, yeah, it was a great choice. I know that we had a committee that made that decision many years ago, but I'm glad we've kept with it. Just made my kids ask me why mom aren't up yet. <laughs> <laughs> I tell my girls, we celebrate Thanksgiving first That's before nice. we start <laughs> celebrating Christmas. They didn't, they didn't like my answer, though. We can't forget the Christmas tree at the plaza. Yeah. Yeah. It's got a star yeah. this year. It looks yeah. nice. I have one question for the chief. Chief, how are we coming on that uh, camera that you were looking for, for or looking at? Uh, the camera that I'm wanting to get is kind of frustrating because I'm not getting a response from that company. Okay. So I've been looking at other options, and there's a, a, another option. The only trouble is you have to plug it into electricity and have it wired to a router. Trying to find one that, that you don't have to do that with. Okay. Hmm. So um, if they're this difficult to get a hold of in buying their product, I'm guessing yeah. that they're even more difficult to get a hold of in servicing yeah. the product. Yeah. So hmm. I'm trying to find another company with a similar product, and okay. it's just not easy to find. So. Sure. So. Okay. I just wanted to keep on top of that because sure. two weeks in a row it's kind of quiet this week, but. Yeah, I did. I did meet with four residents up there just to establish some communication and stuff. And the officers are still up there hitting it pretty hard because they're, they're writing tickets. There has been some tickets written now. So Super. Good. Good. Thank you. Uh -huh. The only other thing I got to say is I wish everyone a safe and happy uh, Thanksgiving. Turkey. With that, we can move on to information agenda. And there's nothing in that category. So we'll move on to... Uh, I need a motion for a move into the executive session. I move that the city commission recess into executive session to discuss confidential business data or se trade secrets of a business, KSA 754319, 
with Amy Lang in attendance and Ashley Hutchinson on the phone, and to reconvene in the City Commission Chamber at 6.25 p.m. I have a motion from Christy, do I have a second? A second. A second from Chuck, any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries, we move on. Okay, no action was taken. I'd offer a motion for adjournment. Second. First and second, we have two. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 It's adjourned. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving.